A few decades ago, some Asians feared coming to the Motor City. They knew about the murder of Vincent Chin. The job is a job. In the television news, you know, you're kind of a peripatetic soul go from town to town looking for work. Tiwa Chang grew up in New York. He'd been reporting in Denver. Then he got a job here at Channel 2. But then coming to Detroit, you know, it was at first scary. And uh, I know when I came to Detroit, I think the statute of limitations had passed, but I had a gun in my car. Eventually I stopped doing that because I realized it was illegal in Michigan. But so when I got to the Detroit area, the first week I had dinner with Mrs. Chin. You know how they killed my son? The father hit him. Yes, the head. This was the time where Asian Americans were starting to become more visible and you were kind of watching that happen here in the city of Detroit. Well, I think what happened was the Vincent Chin movement galvanized and helped create an Asian American movement or recreate it. There was an Asian American movement against the Vietnam War in 1970, but this was the first time since then that there was an Asian American movement. At the time, there was a you know a recession and the auto industry was collapsing because the American cars were not made very well and the Japanese cars were being made better and they were selling better and they blamed the Japanese. They saw Vincent, they thought he was Japanese. So that was what helped create an Asian American movement in uh, 1983 and 84. And of course, you have to credit Helen Zia, Jim Shimura, Roland Huang, Henry Yi, these different people who were very, very uh, active in, in helping fight for Mrs. Chin. In San Francisco, the Stop AAPI Hate Project has been collecting incidents against Asians since the pandemic began. The anger at Asians? Then it was Michigan, now it's everywhere. We launched the center in March, collecting data on news accounts, because that's the only documentation news stories. And so we did content analysis for about a month or two months of news stories. And then we got a flood of responses. When you started getting those responses, what did you think? They're pretty horrific. We're getting you know, yelled at, racial slurs, um, kids and elderly present. So, um, it's actually really wearing reading all these reports, you know, over and over again of how much hate there is. But we're getting it from all over the place. This is that are more dense and, and where people use a lot of public transit, we see a lot more physical assault. So for example, in New York and San Francisco have twice the rate of physical assault than let's say Los Angeles and the national average. People can be more anonymous in big cities. Even in liberal progressive towns like San Francisco, you still see this hate. Here, incidences reported in Ann Arbor and some other places in that database, a lot of verbal harassment. In Troy, State Representative Padma Kupa has some reports too. Some friends have mentioned to me that they have seen people give them the finger or uh, or spit on them as they've taken walks in their neighborhood. I have a friend who's uh, shared with me, a friend of hers daughter was on a Zoom call the child is seven, and one of her classmates said, I hate the Chinese. They started the coronavirus. It's the Chinese virus. China poisoned our people. President Trump has the courage to call it what it is. The Chinese virus. Kathleen Wall has his back. We've got a long way to go till November, and it sounds like this may really be one of the main campaign points that we're going to hear from here on out. It is. It's, it's, you know, Biden also put out an ad that he's strong on China. Trump praised the Chinese 15 times as the coronavirus spread across the world. So it's both parties. U.S.-China relations is going to be a primary campaign issue. And the more people hear politicians China bashing, don't make the distinction between the Chinese government and the Chinese people. And then people don't make the distinction between Chinese people and Chinese in the U.S. And the fact is, look, if you attack China, this is, just think back to the Vincent Chin time. It's so, so much a parallel, except in a, in a bigger way. It's a parallel because back in 1982, we blamed somebody else for our problems, for our inability to manufacture well. And instead of retooling as we have now, and saying, let's make better cars, and let's say to Japan, listen, you want our business? You gotta set up business here too. Remember the Honda plant in Ohio? Toyota in Kentucky? Attitudes change. Tiwa Chang now covering climate change for the Young Turks. And there's so much oil he suggests industry worldwide needs change for everyone's survival and that we work with the Chinese. We can do the same thing with China. Say, listen, you want our business? Set up more factories here. 
you know, do more joint ventures here. We're fighting two things, a depression and a virus. We shouldn't be fighting each other.